Hey guys, welcome to the Massive Iron Channel. I'm Steve Shaw. In this video, I'm going to give you my take on Mike Mentzer's heavy duty, and I'm going to give you a workout option I created called Massive Intensity Training. Before I get into this topic, if you guys have any questions or comments, drop them down below the best topic ideas. I turn into videos just like this. If you need coaching, I'd love to work with you. Just check out the link down below. All right, Mike Menser's heavy duty. What I'm going to do in this video is give you some pros, some cons, some things I like, some things I don't like. But at the end of the day, I want to give you my version of a workout what I'm calling MIT or Massive Intensity Training. I want to give you my take, kind of modernize Mike Mentzer's heavy duty and tell you we're going to take the best things about it, ditch the worst things about it, modernize it, and I'll show you how I would approach that style of training. So let's dive into things a little bit. Now let's look at some of the training principles or the primary training principles of the heavy duty system. Number one, high intensity. Each set is taken to failure. Number two, low volume. Typically one, maybe two sets taken to failure. And number three, maximizing focus. One set, this is, these are Mike's words. These aren't my words. I'm paraphrasing. One set allows you to laser focus on one big effort. So basically you get into the gym and instead of worrying about, hey, I have three or four or five or 12 sets for chess coming up, I get to laser focus on this one set. So Mike listed that as a big benefit. All right, some more primary training principles. Progressive overload, obviously weight increase over time. That's a big one. Recovery, Mike advocated longer recovery times in between workouts. What I find interesting is that we kind of live in a frequency era where everyone's a little bit afraid of body part splits, but all of a sudden we took up an interest in uh, Mike Metzer's heavy duty, which actually swings so far in the opposite direction that for more advanced lifters, he recommended somewhere between four and seven rest days in between every workout. And lastly, form, a focus on precision, execution, and quality form. And finally, individualism, tailoring the program to the specific individual. This just makes sense. Science and logic, empirical evidence, and individual feedback, and compound movements. When possible, the best exercises to take to failure are compound movements. So obviously, Mike had advocated using the best or the heaviest or the biggest hitters or the exercises that had the most opportunity for progressive overload. Now, we're going to look at two of his programs. This is the basic, and we're going to look at more of an advanced. You have workout A and workout B, and you're going to alternate between these workouts, inserting rest days as needed. There's no defined rest structure. Mike advocated a very longer rest in between workouts, so you want to rest naturally. A few days, whatever you feel like, until you're fully recovered. Workout A was upper body, workout B was lower body. You have chest, back, shoulders, biceps, and triceps on upper body. You can see incline press was one to two sets. Flat dumbbell flies one set, so a compound isolation. Back was pull downs or pull ups and bent over rows. So basically you had the lat thickness and the lat width type of thing going on. Shoulders were overhead presses and side laterals. Mike believed, like I do, the best way to train the delts overall, including the side delts, was with the overhead press. And you have one set each for biceps and triceps. Lower body, you have leg press or squats, one to two sets, extensions, curls, and calf raises. Not a lot of heavy posterior-focused uh, movements here, but you do have the deadlift tacked on at the end where Mike listed for the lower back. So really, this is more of a very heavy training day. You have less volume over on with deadlifts and squats in the mix than maybe leg extensions and leg curls. So pretty, pretty mild overall from an exercise selection point of view. Now, the more advanced heavy duty program, as I mentioned earlier, Mike advocated as lifters became more advanced, resting more in between workouts, somewhere between four to seven days. Uh, you have workout A, workout B, and workout C here. Workout A is chest and back, one set to failure. 
back while you're doing this pull downs. I'm I'm laughing. I'm not laughing at Mike. I'm, I just haven't looked at this in a while, and it just seems utterly ridiculous to do a one set to failure of pull downs. Legs, you got squats and leg curls and uh, workout C, shoulders and arms, overhead press, and then one set each for arms. Now, I don't want to come off as mocking in any way, but you can see as Mike advanced uh, in his philosophies or his training beliefs that things kind of push way, way beyond the pale here, a little bit way overboard to the point where we're, you're hardly doing any work and you're resting a ton, a ton of days in between workouts. So let's look at some of the pros and cons, some of the positives and negatives of the heavy duty system. These are what I call heavy duty flaws, things I think are completely misguided. Feel free to process things yourself, come up with your own conclusions. This is my, this is my opinion based on uh, 38 years of lifting and 20 years of coaching and programming. Low volume, Mike advocated low volume. I think this is far away from convention or, or historical standards. If you look, basically, if you look at every lifter over the course of the last 70 years, you find out that convention, the average lifter is probably training somewhere around four days. We're talking very successful lifters, somewhere around an average of four days per week over the course of their training career, training for anywhere from an hour to an hour and 15 or an hour and a half. Basically, volume-wise, if you look at the history of lifting, the average lifter is getting in a lot more volume than Mike. We don't really need to beat this to death. This is just common sense. Uh, fragility. Mike kind of advocates, hey, you can only do a couple sets and then you have to rest a long period of time. Basically kind of pushing the narrative that the body is super fragile and that the intensity of this work is so intense that you need minimal work and maximum rest. I will tell you the body is not that fragile. It can handle more work and doesn't need excessive rest periods. And I mean excessive right? Not resting seven days in between every workout. I would add that one of the cornerstones of hypertrophy or muscle building is accumulating a little bit of work capacity, building up your work capacity. We don't need a ridiculous work capacity, but you probably need to be able to train three to four days a week really hard for 75 minutes or so. This is a generalization, but you need to get to that point to really build quality muscle. If the beginner thinks they're going to hop on one to two sets for every muscle group once a week and get quality gains out of it, I don't think so at all. So bottom line, the body is not that fragile. You can do a little bit more. We can do a little bit more than Mike believed. And finally, failure. Now, I'm, I'm listing this as a flaw, but we have to kind of understand, we have to kind of turn over a few stones here. This is very nuanced. The demands of every exercise are different. And this is something Mike Mentzer failed to understand. Not every exercise, not every exercise type is the same when it comes to training to failure. Posterior movements are super intense, like squats and deadlifts and Romanian deadlifts. We can't really train them to failure. They're going to take more than they give. They're going to punish the body. They're going to increase injury uh, likelihood. There are certain movements we can train to failure. You can train your presses generated to failure, your bench presses and overhead presses. There's really low risk of injury. And on your back movements or your pulling movements, you can easily train those to failure. All that really happens is that you experience a slowing of speed, and that's basically form failure or technical failure. So you can train your presses to failure. You can train most of your back exercises to failure. It's not smart to train your posterior movements to failure. And there are some lifts that just don't feel good training to failure. So the point here is that you have to take everything on a lift by lift basis. And I'm going to get into things a little bit more as far as this point in here in just a moment. All right, so some positives of the heavy-duty system. Number one, Mike focuses on quality work. We focus on quality sets first, maximizing sets, not wasting sets. We're not just creating a program on paper and putting in a lot of junk volume. We're going to focus on really hard quality training, and then in my world, we would add volume from there. 
Now, quality form, not just moving weight, not just chasing reps, but controlling the weight, using good quality form, using the best form possible, refining our form, and trying to get the most out of every rep with our exercise form. Now, we're not talking about slow-mo reps or really getting exaggerated time under tension. But unlike the lat pull down or the seated cable row, for example, we're not just jerking the weight around trying to get reps. We're really focusing on good quality mechanical tension and control. Now, a positive from Mike Metzer's world is recovery. I find that a lot of lifters, eager lifters, want to lift too much. They focus on just trying to stuff in a lot of volume, and they want to train five to six days a week to, to kind of at what they believe expedite muscle building. I believe that you are probably better off training four, maybe five days a week. Uh, five days a week if you're younger, have a better recovery, uh, ability to recover, or you just have a wisely constructed program that allows you to train for five days. But uh, erring on the side of a little bit more rest rather than just trying to go balls to the wall with your training and try to train as many days as you can with as much volume. It's a little bit misguided. It can lead to overuse injuries. It can lead to a lot of cumulative punishment. And it's not always wise in many cases. All right, some more positives. Progressive overload for obvious reasons. You don't get a lot stronger than you are now. You're not going to build muscle. Uh, individualism for obvious reasons. Obviously, you want to individualize your program to suit your injury history, equipment, all that kind of good stuff. And feedback. I call this evolving training based on needs. Having a program is just a starting point. But once you're in the gym, you're learning things about your body, your capabilities. Maybe T-bar rows feel better for you than penalty rows. Maybe six rep sets work better for you on penalty rows than eight rep sets. As long as you're making reasonable swaps, this is what I call evolving training based on needs. This is the intelligent way to start out as a beginner to put in a lot of time in the gym and then to evolve your training wisely. Once you become an advanced lifter, you're going to look at your training program and others might look at your training program and go, this doesn't make a lot of sense, but it makes a lot of sense to you because it's been based on wise training evolution. All right, let's dive into Massive Intensity Training, MIT. Massive Intensity Training, MIT, this is basically my take on the pros and cons I've just stressed. We're going to add in a little bit more volume, but we're really going to focus on intensity. Rest, we're going to be hitting each muscle group once a week. We're going to focus on max safe reps rather than training to failure. For max safe reps, instead of training to failure, we're going to focus on pushing each set for as many quality safe reps as possible, stopping that set when form starts to break down or when you feel like you might fail on the next rep. Like I said, we're going to add slightly more volume than Metzer because the body can handle it. You're not going to break down. This is a little bit more reasonable. So we're increasing the intensity nearly every set is pushed in this workout for maximum safe quality reps, not failure, but because we're increasing that intensity, we're gonna decrease the volume so we have less set volume than like a standard program I put together. Now there's some things in here like the rep goal system, massive curls, bulldozer shrugs. I put massive shrugs up there at the bottom of back and traps. That should be bulldozer shrugs. I put some notes in here for you guys that aren't familiar what massive curls are. Massive curls, basically you do eight really strict reps of curls and then you do four cheaty reps and then four drag curls or somewhere along that line, as many drag curl reps as you want. So it's a really intense way to perform the curl. Bulldozer shrugs is kind of the same thing. You do kind of eight mind muscle shrugs, really controlled, holding at the top for one second, and then you finish off with as many explosive power shrugs as you can. So you do strict shrugs and then you do explosive shrugs. I have some notes here on the twos protocol. I have some notes here on bulldozer exercises, the three bowl that you see listed in the workout. Basically, you perform as many quality safe reps as you can, rest 15 to 20 -ish seconds, and repeat for that exercise two more times. Now, the DDP up here, the optional DDP, uh, basically, you have two different 
rep targets for each set. You're going to use a different weight for each set. So on bench press, you might have a rep target for seven or eight on the first set. And on the second set, you could have a rep target for 10 or 12. You're going to use a different weight for each set of the DDP, dynamic double progression. And let's say you're doing 200 on bench press and your rep goal is eight. Once you hit eight on that top set, then you would add five pounds. So 205, and then you'd try to chase eight reps the following workout. The back down set on DDP, let's say you're using something like 180 and your rep goal is 10, 11, or 12. Once you hit that, you would add weight to that back off set or that lower weight set on DDP. Each set on DDP is on its own progression track, has its own progression indicator, and you're going to use different weights for each set. So that is another option here that I didn't list in the notes. Really quickly, Let's look at the four-day split. You have day one, chest and triceps, day two, back and traps, day three, delts and biceps, and day four, legs. I recommend inserting rest days in here wherever it makes sense for you. Uh, it's probably a good idea to do something like chest and back, rest, delts, legs, rest, rest, or you can do chest, rest, back, rest, delts, and legs, back to back, whatever makes sense for you as long as you can fit it in over the course of a week. So on chest day, we have bench press. All, again, all these sets are pushed for maximum safe quality reps. You have bench press twos or DDP. Uh, the dumbbell bench, you have two sets, and the rep goal is 25. So you're doing two sets with the same weight. When you add up the reps, when they reach 25 or more for those two sets, then you would move up in dumbbell weight the next time. You have machine chest press. You're using the three-set or three three set bulldozer protocol. Then we're doing dips, superset with push-ups. This is something that a lot of my clients have experienced. The fun of this over the last three, four, five years. On dips, you're going to simply do two sets with the same weight. When you hit 25 total reps, then you're going to add five pounds onto the dips. And then you have skull destroyers. Here I move away from two sets by 30 to two sets by 25. Basically on skulls, you're using an easy bar. It's like a skull crusher, but you're doing two to three reps of skull crushers, then two to three reps of uh, a close grip bench press, and you're going to alternate between the two to three reps of skulls and two to three reps of close grip bench, resting briefly if you need to until you get to 25 total reps. If you need more information on this, just reach out to me on Instagram at Ben the Barman or search my channel for Skull Destroyers. Then we round off with cable tricep extensions for the three bull, three bull protocol. Back in traps, we do a six minute deadlift block. If you're not familiar with this, I've pushed this for many, many years. Basically during a six minute window, you're doing only singles or doubles. So you'll do a single or double based on how you feel at that moment. You'll release the bar, you'll stand up, you'll catch your breath for a second. You'll reset your form, grab the bar and perform another single or double. This is basically rest, pause, deadlifting, and you're going to do it over a six-minute block. When you hit 10 total reps in the six-minute block, you will add five pounds the next time you perform this protocol. I've dumbbell rows in here, week one, one by 15. This is going to be a little bit intense because it's a unilateral. We're going to go heavy. We're going to go hard. Week two, you can do pendley rows, twos, or DDP. Week one, lat pull down, three bull. Week two, pull-ups, and obviously, if you can't do pull-ups, you can just stick with lat pull-downs. Then we're doing like T-bar rows or the chest-supported T-bar rows. And finally, seated cable row or machine row for the three-bull three bull protocol. And I have here wrapping up things, massive shrugs, two by eight. They're actually the bulldozer shrugs, so I apologize for any confusion. On delts and back, you're going to do seated pin press. You're going to do seated dumbbell overhead. You can do side laterals, supersetted with machine delt press. This is a pretty easy superset to execute in a commercial gym. You can just grab a couple dumbbells, take them over by the machine overhead press, and you're good to go. You have bent over flies. If you don't like them, you can do rear delt swings. You can do face pulls. You can do reverse pack deck. You can do whatever you want. And then we're going to finish off with massive curls. Please read how that protocol is done. And seated incline dumbbell curls to round out that day and finally on leg day we're going to do squats two sets 
drop 20. The first set, you're going to try to get in seven to eight reps, six, seven, eight. Basically, when you hit eight reps on that first set, you're going to add five pounds next time in the gym. So that first set, you're going to be working within the six to eight rep range. And once you hit eight reps on there, the next time in the gym, you add five pounds. Then whatever weight you're using for that top set, you're going to do a second set, but you're going to drop that weight by 20%. You could drop it by 25 or 30 if you want to get a little bit more intense. And we're going to perform that second set for maximum safe quality reps. Now, on squats, we want to be extra careful, not training to failure. We want to leave a couple reps in the tank on each of these sets. We don't want to beat up our lower back, so be really careful here. Push hard, but be reasonable and be smart. Leg press, you have the three-set uh, bulldozer protocol. Then we're going to do one set of Romanian deadlifts. This, If you want to do two, go right ahead, but this can be a pretty intense posterior chain movement. We're going to try to save some wear and tear on your posterior chain. So we're going to do one set. The Romanian deadlift can be very difficult for some people to master. So please take time and try to learn proper form on this. And we're going to round off with leg extensions for rest pause, three bowl protocol, uh, leg curls, the three bowl protocol, and then lunges. We're going to do alternating lunges. So you're going to stand in place and you're going to do your right leg, your left leg, your right leg, your left leg until you get 50 total reps. This is rest pause. So if you need to stand up in place for 10 seconds, catch your breath, catch, catch your senses, and then get back at it, you can. Once the 50 reps feels manageable, you can grab a 10-pound plate and do them with that, or a kettlebell, maybe a 25, then maybe move up to 45. If you get super impressive on these to a place where you just feel you're really in control, you can grab a safety squat bar and do more weight, or you could do them with a regular barbell. All right, guys, that's it. If you have any questions on massive intensity training, hit me up on Instagram at Ben the Barman or join teammassiveiron.com. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day.